this is this is this is Here it is a new episode of the Mike Herrera podcast. I'm your host, Mike Herrera. Great to be here. MXPX.com for all your all your needs, all your MXPX and punk rock needs. We got um, the new album, Find a Way Home. All the variants of vinyl are in there. We've got swag. We got you know t-shirts, hoodies, all that stuff. So appreciate you if you want to support what I do with the podcast or with MXPX and my music. MXPX.com is the best place to do that. Um, aside from that. We got shows coming up. You can support live music and support punk rock by coming to see MXPX. We're coming to Atlanta, Georgia, Buckhead Theater on on Friday, March fifteenth, and then Saturday, March sixteenth, in Orlando, Florida, at the Orlando House of Blues. MXPX and the Ataris tickets are available right now. Don't wait; it's packed already. It's going to be great, but there are a few available. So go get those tickets. Support what we do here. And if you can't make it to those shows, we're going to be in Mexico City March 29th at the end of the month. March 29th, end of next month, by the way. Um, that is going to be epic. Sum 41, MXPX, the Ataris, Blanco. It's uh, the Punk Rock Festival in Mexico City. So uh, that, and then after that, April 5th in Denver, sold out. April 6th in Salt Lake City, sold out. Thank you. That'll do for now. Um, if you haven't already heard Linoleum by myself, uh, it's actually not even by me. It's it's under my name on streaming. If you want to find it on streaming, Linoleum by Mike Herrera. Just search Mike Herrera. Um, but my daughter Sailor sang the song, and I played guitar. And I sang some background vocals, but really, it's just it's all about her, and she sounds so good on it. I was really, really blown away by the response. Everybody loves it. I mean, it's it's... It's the most popular song by No Effects, so of course it's going to be a popular cover. Um, but I feel like we just did something. We did a cover that a lot of people do, but we did it even a little bit better than it's been done. And I know that's saying a lot. And I haven't heard every cover that's been done, so let's, you know, whatever, take it with a grain of salt. But I'm really proud of of my daughter and and how how well she really performed this song. She really did a great job. She, she took it seriously. I, I, you know, uh, I, we started messing around with the song, just practicing in, in the living room. And she started singing it and was really good. And I was like, let me print out those lyrics. And I printed out the lyrics for her so she would know the actual, you know, exactly. And she, she had nailed it like in a day. And so we recorded it in the studio and, and here we are, made a video and, and put it out. And, it's it's really fun because the idea is you know we wanted to celebrate uh, the last year of No Effects. They're breaking up after this year, and it is kind of sad to think about. But but uh, <laughs> you know I think we can make those those sad feelings triumphant and happy by um, realizing that the the younger generation is is going to be good, is is loving punk rock music, and is going to carry that torch for us so i'm not ready to uh to let go of my torch yet mxpx is still going strong still writing music still playing shows and i i don't see i don't see ever quitting i mean i maybe we will maybe we will when the time is right but um it's not in my head right now um i, I want to keep going as long as i can possibly do this as long as i can still sing and perform and, and write coherently then um i'm gonna keep it rolling all right let's get into some of these voicemails you guys what is up mike my name is eric from california um i've actually met you a whole bunch of times and i, I haven't really talked to you in depth or anything but i guess i would i, I would consider myself a generation before you kind of like the drive through era Played a bunch of bands at that time. Um, always wanted to sit down and talk to you because I've been a fan probably since I was like 14, 15 years old. Um, you were inspirational to me in uh, learning, you know, bass, guitar, drums, everything. I'm actually calling you from backstage at the Buckhead because you guys will be here in a few months. And um, I want to leave you a care package. I play in a band called The Fab Four. It's like a Broadway-style Beatles tribute and um, we we play at a lot of the same places and I go through an hour and a half of makeup 
before I hit the stage to um, make me look like Ringo Starr because I look like nothing like him. I look more like you. And I, I actually made a joke like on Twitter X or whatever, uh, asking other people if they want to start a uh, MXPX tribute because I still have my Stingray. And I sing more like you than I do Ringo too. So anyway, thank you so much for all the content, my man. I, I love everything you guys have put out. I love this podcast. Uh, and it kind of keeps me connected to that, to that world, which I miss very much. And I almost tried to reach out to you because I was in Bremerton like last month, uh, last year sometime and a uh, theater there and the staff had nothing but great things to say about you guys and you in particular. And what's funny is I was walking down Bremerton, uh, down the street and you were on some kind of promotional, uh, Bremerton area thing i i don't remember what it was but it was hilarious anyway um i have a three-year-old he's a huge fan uh all i have to do is say uh i don't want to and he'll say let my life fly by. so anyway you guys have been a huge inspiration to me and i appreciate it and i never really thought about calling before but you know i'm here at the buckhead i see you guys' name and uh yeah i just i appreciate everything you guys do and uh keep on rocking maybe our paths will meet uh, if you break your arm, call me. <laughs> I got that stingray. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Bye. Eric, thanks for the call, man. Ah, I love that. The Fab Four. I'll have to check that out. Um, I wish I would have seen you guys play. Uh, next time I see you coming to Bremerton, I'll, I'll try to check it out. Um, Buckhead Theater. Yeah. I awesome. I love that place. Um, dude, I, I love the, that you play all these instruments and that you got your start listening to mxpx and punk rock and and you still you still think about your roots like that that to me like you're you're doing something right you know because uh i hate it when people forget where they come from or came from i hate it when people just abandon everything they've known i mean of course if it's uh causing trauma in your life of abandon it get rid of it but i just mean you know there's a lot of simple things in life that that people kind of just let go by the wayside so man it, punk rock is something that that uh i don't necessarily listen to every time i listen to music sometimes i listen to other stuff but i always go to back to punk rock i mean i i love i love the the simplicity and i love the the raw motion i don't know to me it just it explains it explains life so well um i appreciate your call very cool very cool and i'm and i love hearing hearing about people that have that have known known mxpx for a long time doing really well themselves in their lives so uh, i hope you continue to do well and and uh, and i hope i don't break my arm just because i don't want to break my arm but i would love to, to cross paths with you someday and we can chat more about it all right thanks for the call eric hey mike it's your erstwhile attorney daniel from ohio uh, I was calling to you know, leave a message. I uh, First off, I want to say still loving the new album. Been in that all the time. Great work. Uh, you, know, you, guys, you guys are amazing. Uh, looking forward to the upcoming shows. I'll see you in L.A. I'll see you in New York and Philly for my birthday weekend. It's going to be a hell of a time. Uh, but the reason for that call, I wanted to get some background information from you on that song by the Unlovables, the Mike Carrera song. You know what you love it. Ooh, my Carrera, I love you, this I swear up. Anyhow, you know it. But my question for you is, how'd that come about? Did you know this woman before the song came out? Have you met her? Did you know her? Had you met her before? All these things have always been in my head. Because, you know, it just seems like from the lyrics, like she's never actually been able to meet you. But she wrote this song about her infatuation with you, which could be flattering or a little frightening um you know depending on how you look at it so just want to know any background you have about that and kind of what your reaction was to it and you know anything you want to share about it so um anyhow talk to you soon cool great 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 question daniel happy birthday um just saw you in in new york and philly and we had a blast the shows were awesome you had a great birthday you didn't get you actually were you were you were great um and you didn't get fired. <laughs> You're still our attorney. Um, Unlovables. So, um, Ali Bullet uh, is the singer of the Unlovables, and I never have met her. 
I've never met her, but I have talked to her. She's been on my podcast. So I had her on my podcast. We talk about this this sh- song. We talk about her band. We talk about her husband, Chris. Uh, Chris. Uh, what is his last name? Um, I can't remember. Chris Gl- something. He, he, he's a talk show host. He's a comedian. Anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked, but Allie Bullet is uh, Hallie. Hallie, not Allie. Hallie. I think I got that right. Yeah. Hallie. Um, we just we talked about it, and she just had a crush on me and wrote a song. I, I don't know any more about it. Like, I think they thought it was pretty funny, and <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, uh, I this was years later. Like, the song came out probably in the late 90s, and I didn't talk to her on my podcast until a couple years ago, like probably 2020 or something like that. It was, it was, uh, it was a while ago, but yeah, amazing, weird story. And, um, I don't know what she's up to now. Chris Gethert. See, I knew, I I knew the name would percolate up into my brain. That's what it does when I can't think of a name or something. It percolates if I just ignore it. Chris Gethert. So he, he does, um, uh, an af like a late night comedy show sketch comedy and, and improv and really really uh cool stuff anyway she's married to him and she still does music and she does uh other stuff and and she's doing really well in her life um the unlovables was uh hopefully something that she looks back on and smiles and and feels good about and is not something that she feels uh embarrassment so kudos to her i think she's great i think I, I i don't know every time i heard that song or heard about that song it made me smile it made me feel good about myself even though it's a joke song and it's really just kind of a dumb one but i, I love it I, I think it's great and i think uh i appreciate the unlovables for even putting that out into the world so i hope that answers your question a little bit um and uh let's move on a couple more Hey, Mike, it's Bill calling in from Brockport, Pennsylvania again. Um, just had some music videos on while we were wrapping Christmas presents, and I happened to be on the table right in front of the TV, so I was paying a little more attention to it. A day to remember is all I want come on. I had never, in the many times I've probably seen that video in passing, noticed that you were in the music video for that. Um, what's the backstory on that? How'd that come about? Just... I don't know. I was just never realized that. I was just curious. Thanks. Hope you have a happy holidays. And can't wait for next February in New York City and Philly. I'll be there later, man. All right. Obviously, we're spreading out your your voicemails a little bit, so this one's a little old, but completely valid. Um, Great to see you in New York, by the way. Got to say what's up. Um, A Day to Remember video. I was in... That was shot... Uh, my part was shot in Memphis, Tennessee, on tour, and it was shot in the back of the Tumble Down tour van. I was actually on tour with Tumble Down, my other side project band that I used to do quite a lot. And um, I was contacted by Data Remember because they just, you know, they were looking for people, friends, and uh, acquaintances, and people they admired. And MXPX was uh, is a band that Jeremiah or Jeremy, sorry, Jeremy. The, the the lead singer he he grew up listening to us and and I think some of the other guys too um, and so they really wanted to get me to to do a little cameo so I was like you know what am I doing I'm doing tumble down I'm just cruising around in this van playing Memphis Tennessee and bars and stuff so I did it and it came out and people were like what that's such a weird connection but yeah the connection is um, Jeremy is a fan of MXPX and um, I, I love, like I said, like I was talking about the first on the first uh, from the first caller, Eric. I love hearing about fans that are doing really well, and a day to remember are doing fairly well. They, you know, they play basically they play arenas now, and um, they probably play stadiums and here and there too. Uh, so uh, I wish them the best, and hopefully they come out and see us in Orlando, Florida. We're playing down House of Blues uh, March sixteenth, and I think they're from Florida, so uh, we'll see. We'll see if they they show up, or at least one or two of the guys might show up. All right, uh, let's do one more, one more uh, voicemail, and we will uh, we'll get on with our week, you guys. I appreciate you. 
Hey, what's up, Mike? Uh, this is Cam. I'm calling you from Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, love the podcast, man. I listen to it every week. Uh, I just wanted to uh, tell you a funny story. So I have a uh, little girl named Mila who just turned two this last weekend. And uh, I have uh, turned her into an MXPX fan um, instantly. It's funny because every single time we get in the car, you know, I ask her what she wants to listen to, and every single time she answers with the same thing. She always screams from the back seat in her car seat. She screams, "Not today!" Uh, she has the, deemed that her favorite song off of the new record, and um, I hear it at least once a day uh, per her request. So, uh, yeah, you know, when they say you got fans of all ages, uh, that is very, very true. Uh, so, uh, little Mila loves you, and uh, we'll be playing "Not Today." Uh, many, many, many more times. Uh, thanks, man. Uh, keep up the good work, and I uh, can't wait to see you in Denver coming up here in April. Uh, got our tickets, and we are pumped. All right, later. Man, I cannot. I mean, it. Sh- the f- the look on Mila's face when we play not today live in Denver is going to be wild, and and I, I'm sure I'll miss it because I'm going to be busy. But wow, it's going to be awesome. I, I can't wait. Goosebumps just thinking about how cool how cool life is when you get to see your favorite band play your favorite song like it's happened to me you know I, I've heard some of my favorite songs by the, the Ataris by the Descendants by No Effects by Rancid you know like all these bands that I listen to you know so yeah that that feel that makes me feel good thank you for the call I appreciate it Cam so cool shout out to Mila. Can't wait to see y'all in Denver, MXPX, Five Iron Frenzy, and the Ataris at the Ogden Theater in Denver. Sold out. Thanks for your your support on that. Um, And then Salt Lake City the next night. It's going to be epic as well. Also sold out. Um, But there are still tickets available for Atlanta and Orlando. So if you guys want to come to the East Coast, Southwest, or Southeast, come on down. Uh, Atlanta's got tickets. Buckhead Theater, like my man Eric, playing bass at the fa- you know for the Fab Four. Um, you're not actually playing bass though, because you're saying you you dress up like Ringo, so you play drums. From what I I could gather, uh, you play it all. You play it all. Anyway, love all these calls. Thank you guys so much for the love. Um, thanks to everybody that's added linoleum to your music library, um, to your playlist, whatever it is. I, I appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, just seeing everybody share the video online and comment about how cool it was to see Sailor sing, uh, it meant the world to me. It's, it's really, it literally is why I do this, is because of getting to do things like this, putting out a song like Linoleum. I, I, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a super popular song, I get it. Um, kind of a no-brainer for people to love it. But aside from that, just putting it out there with with Sailor singing, that's something that was new for us. Um, And uh, I hope she's, you know, she, in case you're wondering, she really, she's like, we're like, hey, the song's out. And she's like, oh, cool. And then was like, all right, let's go skate. You know, we went roller skating the day it came out. And so she was just more focused on going skating with her friend. Um, I thought that was a very, very healthy way to think about it all like she had already had her fun we we did the the video and we recorded the song and and that was awesome and she got to see it back and was like good from there on she's not really concerned with whether or not people like it or this or that which i think is amazing so we'll keep that rolling but (laughs) keep the you know she doesn't have social media or anything like that she she's got um she's got youtube but uh, we we really are trying to like hang back from from doing any any of the things that a, a normal artist would do. We don't necessarily want her to be getting into that. We want her just to be a kid and just to enjoy the the real process of of living life, and that includes doing things like singing songs and, and learning instruments and recording and, and all that. But it doesn't have to take up her whole life. Like that's just. That's just another really cool thing that she got to do in her life and we'll see how it goes in the future but um i'm just blown away so thank you everybody that's shared that song and like i said if you want to find it and add it if you haven't already done so you can search my name mike herrera 
It's on. It's not on the MXPX streaming. It's on my career streaming. Uh, you can find it anywhere like that. And it's, but it is on the MXPX YouTube. So if you want to see the video, it's on our MXPX YouTube. All right. Um, shout out to Bob McKnight. Thanks for producing. Thanks for making it all happen. Uh, even when I don't have anything to give you, my man, you're ready for it. So thank you. Uh, the Bob and Katie Show is uh, Bob's podcast. I recommend it to anybody that loves uh, to laugh and to just listen to funny stories. They, they're always telling funny, crazy stories about their real lives. Um, and, of course, you guys, mxpeaks.com, come out and see us. Atlanta and Orlando is up next. And then Mexico City. Um, we're playing uh, with no effects in October in Los Angeles. It's actually in San Pedro, California. That's uh, the weekend of their very last shows the very last shows they'll ever play are ending in los angeles and we're we're on that weekend so besides that stay tuned for mxpeaks.com and and we'll be putting up more stuff in the future or the near future even i, I don't know well like i say every week i might have even missed something this week that i forgot to tell you about but i hope not i hope not uh, i think we covered everything all right you guys until next week thanks for listening peace